Star Wars Prop Building Series. If this is your first time joining us, please allow me to extend a personal invitation to drag out your tools and raw materials and build along with us. And if you've been with us before, allow me to thank you for inviting us back for another prop building video. In this episode, we'll construct the RT-97C Heavy Blaster Rifle using parts from a home improvement store. I used the following tools to construct this prop. A jigsaw, a hacksaw, a rotary tool, a drill with various drill bits, Lexan scissors, screwdrivers, and various grits of sandpaper. A list of the materials can be found in the description below. As always, feel free to change any of the tools, methods, and materials to construct your blaster. To get started, download and print all of the templates from the link in the description below. I used Adobe Reader to print the templates. Because of the large size of the barrel template, it will need to be printed with the poster option. I suggest ticking the cut marks option to show where the paper should be trimmed. The other templates should be printed with the actual size option. Trim the barrel template, tape it together, and then cut it out along with the other templates. Sand the edges and surface of the 3 inch couplings with 120 grit sandpaper. The rough surface will help the adhesive form a tight bond. Trim the utility runner so that you have two pieces that measure 8.3 cm by 31.9 cm. Apply some E6000 on the back of the utility runner and wrap it around the PVC coupling. Tape it and allow it to cure for 24 hours. While this dries we can start trimming the wood and PVC components. Cut the center hole out of the handle template using an X-Acto blade. Trace around the handle template onto some 1 inch wood. Trace two grip templates onto some quarter inch wood. You'll also want to trace the ammo drum mounting piece on some quarter inch wood. Fasten the 1 inch wood to your work table with some clamps. Drill out a hole in the center trigger location with a 1 8 inch bit. Using a Dremel cutting bit, trim out the center and clean it out with a sanding drum. Using a jigsaw, cut out the handle, two grips, and ammo drum mounting board. Measure 44.45 cm from one end of the 2 inch PVC pipe and mark it. Affix the 2 inch PVC template to the pipe and align it with the cut mark. This will help you make a nice even cut. Using a hacksaw, cut off the excess so that you are left with a 44.45 cm pipe. Tape the template down so that it won't move. Secure the 2 inch pipe in a vise and trim out the marked area with a cutting disc. The handle should now fit securely in the 2 inch pipe. You may need to do some additional trimming and sanding to get it to fit. Drill small pilot holes on the top 3 marks on the 2 inch pipe. Finish with a 7 32nd inch bit. This will allow a number 8 1 inch wood screw to pass through. Place the handle inside of the PVC pipe. Use a 5 64th inch bit to drill holes into the wood. To test the fit, secure the number 8 1 inch wood screws. Remove them when finished. Use a Dremel cone bit on the top three holes to countersink the one inch wood screws. Affix the barrel template to the one inch PVC pipe. Align one end of the template with the end of the pipe. Cut off the excess pipe with a hacksaw. Secure the pipe in a vise or miter box and begin drilling out the holes. To make your drill holes more accurate, use a center punch to tap a small mark at each drill mark. Begin drilling using a small drill bit and gradually increase the bit size. Next, secure the barrel in a vise and remove the marked areas with a Dremel cutting disc. You can clean up any rough areas with a cone bit or sanding drum. Place the half inch conduit next to the one inch PVC pipe and mark it so that it is the same length. Cut the conduit with a hacksaw, a 24 teeth per inch blade sawed through the metal without any issues. To give the conduit a secure fit inside of the one inch PVC, 
Make a few rotations with some friction tape. It should have a nice snug fit inside the barrel. Using the drill target marks on the template, drill pilot holes on the ammo drum board, and then finish with an 11 inch bit. This will allow a number 832 one inch oval Phillips machine screw to pass through. Slip the two inch to one and a half inch reducer on the two inch PVC pipe. Mark a line at the edge of the reducer. Using a straight edge, you'll also want to extend a straight line along the top center of the pipe as shown. Wrap the ammo board template around the PVC pipe and mark the two center holes with a pencil. Drill two small pilot holes and finish with an 11 inch bit. Again, enough for a number 832 one inch oval Phillips machine screw to pass through. Mount the ammo drum board on top of the 2 inch PVC and insert the number 832 1 inch screws to hold it in place. Press the 3 inch coupling drums against the barrel and drill through the four marks with an 11 inch bit. To test fit everything, install the number 832 1 inch screws, some number 8 finishing washers, and some number 832 nuts. Once you confirm it fits, Remove the middle barrel from the assembly, but leave the two ammo drums attached to the board. Using a no parking sign or other 1mm thick plastic, trace around the ammo drum assembly with a pencil. Using a straight edge, make perpendicular lines along the inner drums as shown. You'll want to do this for both the front side and the back side of the ammo drum assembly. Cut both pieces of plastic out with some Lexan scissors. Ensure you have a good fit on both the front and back. Using the front and back templates, align your plastic pieces with the templates as shown and drill pilot holes with a 5 inch bit. While you have your scissors and plastic out, cut out the circle templates, place them on top of the plastic, trace around them, and then cut them out with Lexan scissors. Sand any rough areas off with 120 grit sandpaper. Using the templates as a guide, drill out holes in the center with a 5 inch bit. Sand all surfaces with 400 grit sandpaper to help with paint and glue adhesion. Apply some E6000 adhesive on the rear ammo drum circles. Use a toothpick to align all of the pieces. Tape everything in place, apply compression, and let it dry for 24 hours. For the front sight, wrap some 1 inch tape around the half inch sprinkler extension tube right where the screw indentations end. Saw off the edge with a hacksaw. Assemble the 1 and a half inch corner braces using number 832 3 8 machine screws and nuts. Place the shrub sprinkler head assembly on the screw end, place a hose clamp over the middle, followed by the half inch PVC coupling on the smooth end. Place another hose clamp on the one inch PVC barrel. Mount the front sight as shown. Visually mark where to install the number 1032 half inch knob. Drill out a hole to accommodate the knob. For the rear sight, disassemble the sprinkler unit and remove the innards.
Align the 90 degree angle corner plate holes with the lines on the 2 inch PVC template. Mark them with a pencil and drill them out with two small pilot holes. Remove the 2 inch PVC pipe template. Place the ammo drum assembly on top of the 2 inch PVC pipe and visually mark where to install the 3 8 inch by half inch hose barb. Drill out two pilot holes for the two hose barbs. Enlarge the holes so that the hose barbs can fit inside. Mount the 90 degree angle corner plates using number 6 half inch pan Phillips screws. Secure a top angle corner plate using number 832 3/8 inch screws and nuts. Secure a hose clamp on top of the corner plate. Slide the sprinkler assembly in and tighten everything to check the fit. Remove the label from the rear sprinkler site. It may require some goo gone to remove the leftover residue. Tape the quarter inch grips onto the handle as shown. Try to get the edges aligned. Using the grip template, drill a hole through all three pieces of wood using a 7 32nd inch bit. This will allow a 1 inch binding post screw to pass through. Remove the tape and then secure the grips again by folding some tape to secure the insides. Using 60 grit sandpaper, sand down the grip handle so that all three pieces of wood are flush with one another. Disassemble the handle and use 60 grit sandpaper to round out all of the edges. Do not round out the handle where the grips will be applied. They should remain sharp and flush. Follow up with 120 and 220 grit sandpaper to smooth out the edges. Sand any of the lettering off of your PVC components with 120 grit and 220 grit sandpaper. Sand all plastic surfaces with 400 grit sandpaper. Remove the sheen from all components. This will help you get better paint adhesion. Prior to painting, Mount the 90 degree angle corner plate to the 2 inch PVC pipe using some E6000 and two number 6 half inch pan Phillips screws. Secure the hose barbs in the 2 inch PVC pipe and rear sprinkler site using E6000. While the adhesive does take 24 hours to dry, it is forgiving and any excess can easily be rubbed off after it is dried. It will not craze the plastic. One thing I forgot to do before priming is mounting the handle inside of the 2 inch PVC pipe, securing the number 8 1 inch wood screws, and then filling the holes with Bondo filler. Once the Bondo dried, I sanded it down with 120, 220, and 400 grit sandpaper. This erased the countersunk screw heads on top of the 2 inch PVC pipe. Prior to priming, I did cover a few of the connection points with tape so that the adhesive would get a better grip in the later steps. In a well-ventilated area, apply primer to all of the PVC and sprinkler components, the wood handle assembly, and the wood ammo drum plate. Allow the primer to dry for 24 hours. 
On the next day, apply flat black spray onto all the components and screws. Allow the paint to cure for 24 hours. Apply your choice of wood stain on the quarter inch grips. After the stain has dried, apply some satin polyurethane to protect the finish. I applied three coats and followed the instructions on the can. Using some lacquer thinner, gently wipe off some of the black spray paint on the number 832 one inch screws and finishing washers. Mount the ammo drum couplings to the ammo drum board using four number 832 one inch screws, finishing washers, and nuts. Apply some E6000 on the nuts so that they do not slip off. Enlarge the two holes on the rear ammo drum cover so that two number 6 32 3 8 inch screws can pass through. Fasten them with a washer and nut. Secure the nuts with E6000. Enlarge all of the holes on the front ammo drum cover to accommodate some number 6 panhead screws. I used leftover number 6 half inch screws from another project. In hindsight, I would have used screws with nuts. In this case, I fastened the screws into the plastic and secured the backs with E6000. Apply E6000 to the rear side of the ammo drums and secure the rear ammo drum cover. Tape it down so it can get a firm bond. Do the same with the front ammo drums and front ammo drum cover. Allow these pieces to dry for 24 hours. Rough up the grip handle with some 60 grit sandpaper, apply some E6000 on the grips, fasten the grips, and then secure them with the one inch binding post screw. Align all of the edges. Secure with tape if needed, and allow to dry for 24 hours. You can also install the 2 inch PVC cap and secure it with E6000. Apply some E6000 on the 1 inch coupling which will act as the muzzle. Insert the 1 inch PVC pipe barrel into the 1 inch coupling. For the front sight, apply E6000 to the half inch coupling and connect the half inch sprinkler extension pipe. Next, secure the knob. Apply E6000 to the inside of the 2 inch to 1.5 inch PVC reducer and install the 1.5 inch to 1 inch reducer. Place the ammo drum on top of the 2 inch PVC pipe. Using a Dremel sanding drum on low speed, I had to shave off a little bit of plastic off of the middle covers to get it to fit. Insert the number 832 1 inch screws. The rear screw required using pliers. Place some E6000 on the screw threads and nuts to prevent slipping. Apply some E6000 on the reducer assembly and install it on the 2 inch PVC pipe. I weathered the two scopes with some testers brass enamel. I lightly loaded a paintbrush, wiped off almost all of the paint on a paper towel, and then dry brushed all of the raised areas to give it a worn appearance. I applied the same technique to the barrel using tester silver enamel. You can weather any other areas that you wish. Install the top 90 degree angle corner brace, insert the screws, and secure the nuts with E6000.
Attach the hose clamp, slide in the sprinkler, and tighten the hose clamp. Attach the corner brace assembly to the barrel and front scope as shown. Tighten all of the hose clamps. Insert the half inch EMT conduit into the one inch PVC pipe. Attach the 12 inch braided supply hose line to the sprinkler and two inch PVC body. And finally, insert the barrel into the reducer assembly. That's it, we're all done. Help a sand trooper out and give me a like, or better yet, click the subscription button below.